Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Numbers chapter 21. When the Canaanite king of Arad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Atrium, he attacked the Israelites and captured some of them. Then Israel made this vow to the Lord. If you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy their cities. The Lord listened to Israel's plea and gave the Canaanites over to them. They completely destroyed them in their towns, so the place was named Hormoth. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no bread, there's no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many of the Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord would take these snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked on at the bronze snake, they lived. The Israelites moved on and camped at Oboth. Then they set out from Oboth and camped in Ai Abrim, in the wilderness that faces Moab toward the sunrise. From there they moved on and camped in the Zered Valley. They set out from there and camped alongside the Arnon, which is in the wilderness extending into the Amorite territory. The Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. That is why the book of the wars of the Lord says, Zarab and Sufa and the ravines, the Arnon and the slopes of the ravines that lead to the settlement of Ar and lie along the border of Moab. From there they continued on to Beer, the well where the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, sing about it, about the well that the princes dug, that the nobles of the people sank, the nobles with scepters and staffs. Then they went from the wilderness to Metna, from Metna to Nahalil, from Nahalil to Bayamoth, from Bayamoth to the valley of Moab, where the top of Pisgah overlooks the wasteland. Israel sent messengers to say to Sion, king of the Amorites, Let us pass through your country. We will not turn aside into any field or vineyard or drink water from any well. We will travel along the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sihon would not let Israel pass through his territory. He mustered his entire army and marched out into the wilderness against Israel. When he reached Jahaz, he fought with Israel. Israel, however, put him to the sword and took over his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok but only as far as the Ammonites, because their border was fortified. Israel captured all the cities of the Amorites and occupied them, including Heshbon and all of its surrounding settlements. Heshbon was the city of Sion, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and had taken from him all of his land as far as the Arnon. That is why the poets say, Come to Heshbon and let it be rebuilt. Let Sion's city be restored. Fire went out from Heshbon, a blaze from the city of Sion. It consumed Ar of Moab, the citizens of Arnon's heights. Woe to you, Moab! You are destroyed, you people of Chemosh. He has given up his sons as fugitives and his daughters as captives to Sion, king of the Amorites. But we have overthrown them. Heshbon's dominion has been destroyed all the way to Dibon. We have demolished them as far as Nohef, which extends to Mediba. So Israel settled in the land of the Amorites. After Moses had sent spies to Jazer, the Israelites captured its surrounding settlements and drove out the Amorites who were there. Then they turned and went up along the road toward Bashan, and Og, king of Bashan, and his whole army marched out to meet them at the Battle of Indre. 
The Lord said to Moses, Do not be afraid of him, for I have delivered him into your hands, along with his whole army and his land. Do to him what you did to Sion, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon. So they struck him down, together with his sons and his whole army, leaving them no survivors, and they took possession of his land. And so Israel's wars with these various nations now, in the last stretch before the end of the Promised Land, there was a victory over Arad, there was a victory over Moab, there was a victory over Sion, and then uh, this battle with Og. I want to come back to the the battle with Og, but uh, there's a, a very interesting incident where once again the people grumbled and complained and the Lord brought judgment. But this time the remedy for the judgment was something unique. Let me just read from uh, verse 4. So the people traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way, and they spoke against God and against Moses. And they said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? And so we've heard that before. They said, There's no bread, there's no water, and we detest this miserable food. Uh, I have to assume they were talking about the manna. Verse 6, Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them, and they bit the people, and many Israelites died. Now, this is different, this release of venomous snakes. We haven't heard that before. We've seen them judged for this same sin of grumbling and complaining previously. But here, the the judgment involves venomous snakes and um, uh, deadly venomous snakes. And so, verse 7, The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. Now, they always went to Moses and asked for the judgment to be lifted. So that was not unusual. But this time, uh, Moses did pray for the people, but the Lord responded to Moses in a very unique way. He said, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked on at the bronze snake, they lived. Now, this is unusual. It's mentioned again later in the book of Second Kings, this bronze snake. But here's the situation. The people had sinned. Uh, the Lord's judgment was snakes that would kill them. And the Lord said the remedy for their sin and judgment is that a snake would be put up on a pole and they had to look up at the snake on the pole. And then when they were bitten and looked up at the the bronze snake, they would live. Now, the New Testament ties this to Jesus. In John chapter 3, verse 14, we read this. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. And so the snake in the wilderness, that's the story we just read. And so uh, just as Moses lifted up that snake, so Jesus had to be lifted up. The snake represented sin. And so when the people looked on the snake in faith with God, their sins were forgiven, their judgment was removed, and they didn't die. In the case of the Son of Man on the cross, when we look to Jesus on the cross, we have eternal life and victory over sin and death. And so the the serpent in the wilderness, once again, prophetically spoke of Jesus, the Messiah. It's a very unique image, and um, that's all I have to say on that, but it really is an unusual story. And then finally, um, in this chapter, Israel defeats a guy named Og, King Og of Bashan. Now, this Og, it doesn't say in this narrative that the, the man's a giant, but apparently he's a giant. We find out in Deuteronomy 3, And then Psalm 135 and Psalm 136 have things to say about Og. Uh, He was a tremendous man. He had six fingers and six toes on uh, both hands, both feet, and uh, had a huge bed of iron. He was um, a fearsome individual. So this victory got immortalized in Psalms 135, 136, and also it's mentioned again in Deuteronomy 3. So this defeat of the giant King Og was a a major accomplishment. But let's just go back and pray through the the bronze serpent. Lord, you made a way for us to escape from sin and death, just like you made a way for the Jews to escape from sin and death. They sinned against you, and the serpents were sent um, in a form of judgment. But Lord, you had a remedy for that, the bronze serpent on the pole, that if they in faith would look on the bronze snake, they would live, even though they'd been bitten by the, um, 
the poisonous snakes, they would live. Lord, you put Jesus up on a cross for our sins. Lord, you put our sins on him. And when we look to him in faith, our sins are removed from us and put on him. Lord, he was totally innocent. But Lord, we're not innocent. We recognize our sins against you today. We ask you, Lord, to take our sins, forgive our sins, put them on Jesus. Lord, we look to Jesus and its victory of the cross for our deliverance from sin and death. God, by faith, we say that Jesus has taken our punishment. We thank you, Lord, that you've made a way, just like you did with Moses and the snake in the wilderness. The Son of Man was lifted up so that everyone who believes would have eternal life in him. Today, Lord, we believe in Jesus. And we say, Lord, we recognize him and we thank you for him now. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.